Okay, so I am going to go through how to set up a new juice project, kind of the basic architecture of the project, how to, you know, what the methods are, kind of like the order of operations, and then uh, do some audio processing. So let's see here. I'm going to open up the producer and I'm going to hit new project. And whenever you download the juice repo, I'll show you here. Uh, it's easier just to clone the juice repo that way whenever there are updates uh, you can just pull changes like a normal repo and to get the pro juicer uh where's juice let's see here you go into extras pro juicer um and then you would open up this project uh in xcode or visual studio or whatever and then you'll build it and then that will give you the pro juicer uh, which is this piece of software right here which is just like a project management like a project creator for juice so it'll auto generate all the files you need for xcode or visual studio or whatever and for everything pretty much i do i use this basic plugin format everything else audio um, is going to be a gui application like a standalone application that you can do audio gui is going to be like a standalone application that's just like gui you can do a console which i do sometimes to test c stuff uh, but I'm going to do basic and then, uh, what should I call this? Um, stream, stream juice intro. And I always add the DSP module just because you never know whenever I'm going to, you know, want to use it, which is really cool. And then if you pull in my library, it relies on the juice DSP module. So let's see. Okay. I'm going to create a repo for this. So I'm going to go to GitHub desktop. Uh, let me cancel that real quick. Uh, let's see. GitHub desktop. And I'm going to say new repo. It's hard to type with this microphone in front of me. Um, let's see. Stream juice intro. Uh, I'm going to get a readme. I'm just going to do a C++ git ignore and license. I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, let's do G and U. That cool. Now we can go back to the producer and go back. Let's see. It still says stream juice intro. Cool. So now I'm going to put it in that repo. Boom. Okay, cool. So now uh, a couple of things you want to do is open up this project settings. So this is all the metadata that's going to be associated with the, the build and the project and stuff. So if you don't put anything in this company name right here, your plugin by default and your doll will be under something called your company, which you don't really want. So I'm going to say you toward DSP. And after you do that, if I scroll down, you can see this bundle identifier now has via uh, via tour DSP. And then you can choose your plugin formats. Uh, I usually just do AU and VST3. And then you come down here, plugin manufacturer. Since we typed in via tour DSP, it puts that into here. And then your plugin name. This is what you're going to see in the DAW on the drop down list. Uh, so maybe. I, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And then not too much other stuff that I um, change. We could change the C++ 17 if we want. Yeah, I want to make also a, um, a Visual Studio exporter so that you can use the same project and build it in uh, Xcode or Visual Studio. I kind of forgot. Let's see. There's... Yeah, so go down to this plus button and just say uh, Visual Studio 2019. So now you have a cross-platform project that you can open on Mac or Windows and build whichever one you need. And let me double check. I got Viator DSP, I got the name, whatever. All right, cool. All right, and it opens it up in Xcode for us. I'm going to close all of this stuff right here. Open up the four source files that Juice gives you. And before I even go through any of this, I'm just going to build. So in Xcode and Visual Studio is pretty similar, except in Visual Studio, you'll change the build. It's going to be over here on the right. 
um, but in Xcode it's up here. So we can change to build just an AU version or just VST3. We can do all, we can do standalone. I'm gonna do standalone first. Um, it's really helpful for um, just checking things really quickly, uh, checking things visually. So since I'm on M1, I'm gonna actually have to do Rosetta. Uh, but if you don't have an M1 machine, you'll just, uh, I think there'll just be one choice. I'll just say my Mac or whatever. Uh, so yeah, standalone. And for standalone, you can just hit the play button. And it'll take a little bit of time. It'll compile it for the first time. The first build always takes forever and then all the other builds after that are much quicker. So it just built successfully and it is going to open up the standalone version of the plugin. And the standalone version doesn't do any audio. It'll just basically um, be a way to look at the UI. Okay, cool. So this is what the plugin looks like by default. The first time you build it, it just says hello world, you know, typical programming stuff. And this is what it would look like in the DAW also, but we just opened it as a standalone. So that's how quick and easy it is to check things. So without even explaining too much, I'm gonna change the text just so that you see how quick and easy this is. So I'm gonna go into the plugin editor and change this to Juice Stream. And if we hit play, it'll build it. It'll open it up. And we can see our change, it says Juice Stream. So that's how easy it is whenever you're prototyping UI to just build in standalone. And then we can build it as a regular plugin. Um, I could do all, but I'm just gonna do AU because I check everything in Logic anyway. So now it's under AU and instead of hitting the play button, I'm gonna hit build. Cool, it built and I'm gonna open Logic and see if it's in there. Now on Windows, I don't think the build will automatically get sent to your VST folder. You'll have to actually manually put it in there, but on Mac, it puts it in there for you. So I'm gonna do a new file, audio, and I'm gonna say, uh, intro. And let's see if our plugin is there. Let's see, I'm gonna go down to audio units, Viator DSP, and I already forgot what I called it. Um, oh, stream juice intro right here. And boom, look at that juice stream. We got our plugin, it's in Logic. Look how easy that was. We have a plugin, it says my name, and it's really cool, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so there is a way to build and test in Logic by attaching it to logic also. So if we go up to product, we can go to scheme, edit scheme. And for the build configuration, you can build as debug or as release and release is the build that you're actually gonna release to the public because when you build in release mode, it gets rid of all of the debug things that Xcode will do for you and it'll optimize all the code. Uh, so while you're in debug, you can check debug statements like assertions and things like that. And the really cool thing is you can use logic to open the plugin in debug so that if your plugin crashes for some reason and this is attached to logic, it'll actually take you to the part of the code that crashed logic. So if we go to this executable, we can go to other, we can type in logic row. Cool. And then, like I said, I'm not gonna explain all of these right just this second, but I will do something to kind of show you uh, what I mean real quick. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna make a, a random variable here. I'm gonna say bool uh, debug, I guess, is equal to false. And then I'm going to do something called an assertion and juice has its own kind of wrapper around assertions called J assert. Uh, I don't remember if I have to use the juice namespace or not, but I'm going to just do uh, J assert debug. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you an assertion. If whatever you put in um, equates to false and it did. So watch this, we're going to 
attached to logic since we've done this product scheme edit scheme now you can see the little logic symbol is next to our plugin and now we can click the play button it'll build it and open it attached to logic and the logic will open for us you can see it opening at the bottom right here and we should hit this assertion okay so let's open juice stream intro okay and let's pull the plugin in and we hit an assertion check this out so what we've done is since we're building the plugin in debug mode um, we have this option to use assertions and other debug commands in uh, in xcode so what we've done is i've created like this fake assertion or this fake issue so what we've done is since we're attached to logic it brought us to the line of code that uh, asserted basically and gave us this assertion so this is really handy for um if you're you know working one example is whenever you're doing ui stuff um if you don't clean up memory um related to juices look and feel class um, you'll hit an assertion in the juice library and it's kind of like an, a reminder to go hey go to this line right here and make sure that this isn't actually a problem and this is super useful and i wanted to bring it up before we do everything else because for the longest time i didn't know this was an option to you know i didn't really know how to use xcode that well i didn't know how to attach processes and stuff like that so for a long time i was developing without this and it really is uh something that you shouldn't um overlook even when you're just learning so i would say um set up your project the way i did uh where you go to product scheme edit scheme and you can choose which doll you want to open it with like i could do studio one or reaper if i wanted but you know i do everything in logic i like logic so that way you have the option to open it in debug mode with logic and basically you can build it in three different ways now you can go to standalone right here if you just want to check the gui real quick check the way the plugin looks cool you can go back to au and if you want to open it with logic opening at the same time you can hit the play button but if you don't want to do that for some reason and you just want to build it you can go to product build and it will build and not open logic it'll op only open with logic if you hit the play button so all of this is super necessary and super helpful thanks for watching feel free to be active in the discord and do some stuff in discord i'd love to answer any questions help you out with anything and yeah uh, I'll be back Monday, same time, 5.30 Central Standard. Thanks for watching, y'all. See you next time.